Yeah, good day, guys. Welcome to another Zoom session. Uh, this is Zoom session number 57. The previous Zoom session was Zoom session number 56, right? As as I always say, guys, um, in the beginning of every session, if you are new here, it is extremely important that you start with the first Zoom session, right? Because the first Zoom session um, is actually a full-on online course, right? And then the sessions after that, from Zoom 1 to number 7, they are um, an online course. And after that, it's just weekly mentorship videos, right? Which are also extremely yeah they're also like very important to watch because um that's where I give um a few tips also here and there each lesson each session there's like a, a secret you know that I give out you know I do this just so that everybody like attends you know every week you know because guys trading is all about just going over the skill over and over and over like all day all night you know okay but not all day all night but then like as much as you can you know the more time you spend on the charts the better your trading will improve and you know market structure will also make sense you know but then other than that let's get straight into it guys you know that the videos after um you know the videos after um the seventh one are just weekly analysis videos so um this is our weekly analysis video for this week the 6th of feb to the 10th right and then also throughout the week there will be signals sent in the group and also watch this given so yeah let's get straight into it can everyone just confirm first if they can hear me uh, before I start here? Let's just see. Maybe I should type it. I can hear you. Can you just close this window? That's what these mosquitoes do with me. Please bear with me, guys. Yo. Please, guys. Ish. I'll be alone when they're busy biting me. <laughs> but I took this case straight into it, right? Okay, so let's get straight into it, right? So we first have NAS 100, right? So as you all know, we analyze uh, two, the two indices that we trade is NAS 100 and US 30, right? But however, if you are a beginner, I suggest that you start with um, the currency pairs, right? Currency pairs suggest the majors, right? So if you're a beginner, stick to currencies. But then if your trading budget allows you and your skill also allows you, then you can hop onto the indices, right? So let's get straight into it. So this is NAS on the daily time frame. You can see that NAS 100, as we break down every week, guys, eh? there we go. As we break down every week, we can all agree that NAS broke out of this bearish structure, right? This downtrend. And then also the, after the breakouts, we got a retest, right? So the retest, the breakouts and retest confirms that the market is changing direction and structure, right? So we have a breakouts and retest. So here's our retest point. And then we can pretty much see that the market has just been shooting up ever since, right? So now it's all about trying to um, catch the entry points. As you can see now, as you, as you all know, guys, uh, we have two types of trends, right? We have a downtrend and an uptrend. So when the market breaks our structure, when the market breaks, like, for example, yeah, you can see the market broke our downtrend, right? So you can see that the market actually changes direction. So a breakout indicates a change in direction. So as you can see, yeah, this was our breakout point, and the retest confirms that what we have a change in direction. But then we use the trend lines to enter, as right? so we enter based on the trend line, right? So you can see first, second, third touch, third touch, Changing point, you can see third touch, fourth touch. We enter on the third touch, fourth touch. Now we enter in what bias because why we in an uptrend. So now, mass one hundred. We should know the we know the long term movements over over uh the overall movements is bullish structure, right? So we should basically wait for a retracement back to the downward trend line. Wait for the market to touch, close above, and then enter enter to it enter to the previous high, right? So now it's just all about, so now we, we are confident in saying that the market is going to drop, you know, just a complete market structure. You guys know the market creates higher highs. Uh, you guys know that the market creates higher highs. So I was just disabling the drawing things. For There's higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows over here. This is a higher high, higher low, this is a higher high, higher low. You know that we enter on the third touch and thereafter, right? Take profit, previous high. Buy, buy on the low, exit on the high, you know, same thing here, guys. So that's the structure that we would be that, that, that we're gonna be waiting for on uh NAS 100 right? So we should just 
Let me just scroll down to the one hour time frame to see if there's any. Let me just see. Let me go. So you can see that now on the one hour time frame, we have this minor downward trend line. So we really know that okay, the market is the market is creating the market is like the market's dropping, but then on the bigger time frames, this is why I actually prefer trading the bigger time frames and the smaller time frames. On the bigger time frames, we would have thought that the market is selling overall, but then when you come to the four hour time frame, you can actually see that the market is buying, you know. But that's, that's the difference between H4 and H1, you know. Same applies to daily and H4. But then now because we know the daily structure, right? We are confident in saying that the market is buying. Why? Because we broke out of the major downward trend line. So now, just because we know, just because now we know the daily structure, we now have to use that information hand in hand with every single time frame. So then the daily structure, you can see here's our H4 trend line, right? So you can see that on the daily time frame. Yeah, you can see that this is an uptrend, but then it's not as visible, you know. But then when you come down to the four hour time frame, it's more visible. But then also, what's also more visible is the downward movement, right? You can see the cells, you know. I'm just trying to break down, guys, why you should actually stick to the bigger time frames than the smaller time frames, you know. Like, I believe in all the trades, guys, you see. So, yeah, swing trading is the way, you know, like this, these fundamentals, the fundamentals aren't really um, consistent, you know. But then you see when you're trading, trade, when you're trading with the trend, you're actually able to catch consistent trades because fundamentals come like once a month or, you know, but then now here you can see that we get entry points every fourth hour, you know, we basically just have to wait four hours, you know, so you can see that here we enter, wait four hours, or oh, it depends on now how many, um, now the market moves. We enter, you can see one, two, three, third touch over here, so this candlestick could be closest above the trend line, we enter on the open off this one, right, and then take profit is our previous high, guys. Our take profit is always the previous high because that's where the market is, um likely to reverse but we do know that the market is going to break above right it's just to create a higher high you know that's why i don't actually like i don't like double top patterns you know double top patterns i feel like they not that not that they off and wrong but then it's, they're not consistent you know because yeah you would have gotten on the wrong side of the market you know you would have entered a sell and the market is still buying because why the market needs to create a higher high you know but this i repeat and follow on the on the um first zoom session Yeah, I know I was waiting for you guys to leave a review. I'm not speaking yet. That's my analysis on NASDAQ, guys. But then I want you guys to pay attention to what I said on the um to what I said about the time frames, guys. Time frames are very, very important, you know. You don't want to enter the market at the wrong time and you don't want to be caught on the wrong side of the market, you see. So the bigger time frame always gives you a guideline as to how the market is actually moving overall, you know? So, yeah. So that was nice. Now this is US 30, right? So really you know that the structure guys is usually almost similar. You can see that on Nest, like you can see that we had um, the same bearish, we had the same uh, downtrend, right? We still had the same bearish structure. You can see that we have lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower high, lower low, right? Guys, let me just put this phone on charge ish. Let's go to the So now let's go on to your So 
you can see that we got the breakouts. Here's the uh, here's the retest, right? So the breakout indicates that we're having a change in, that we're getting a change in direction, and then the retest confirms that the market is actually um like it's confirming the it's confirming the actual trend that's forming, right? Because the retest is usually the second higher low, you know. So the, the retest actually confirms that the market is we just draw it higher low, higher high. So then we expect the market to create another higher low. So already from the higher low, from this higher low, we already know that the market is the most likely to create what a higher high and come back down to create a higher low because why the market moves. I look at the market and trends, guys, you know. So the market always moves. The market moves in two directions, up, down, up, down. But between this up and down movement, there's an overall direction, even vice versa, down, up, down, up, you know. And guys, I just simply catch, like, my whole, like, our, our whole approach to trading, guys, our whole approach to the market should actually be catching the points, guys, the reversal points, you know, because you want to, like, catch the market. You want to catch the the change in direction right when it happens and we do that way right on the lows or on the highs so in a downtrend on the lower highs and in an uptrend on the higher lows you know and this is the most major turning points you know so yeah that's why we actually pay attention to them but more information like this is in the actual first zoom session you know but yeah I, for some odd reason people don't like going to that first session so i just covered i just touched up on it now so you can see that nasdaq i mean us 30 have the same structure as NASDAQ. We also got a, a retest over here. So then now we enter on the touch of the trend line, only on the third touch and they're off the right. And you can pretty much see that the market is still giving us the, that bullish structure. You can see that we have, I'm just gonna delete the downward trend line to not uh, complicate the analysis issue, this network issue. But you can see, there we go. Sorry guys. So you can see higher low, higher low, third touch, and on the third touch, exit on the previous side, you can see, right? So then now you can see that the market, first touch, second touch, third touch. So now we're obviously waiting for, we're expecting for a fourth touch, right? So the downward, to the upward trend line. So we're expecting a downward push, a push to the downside, right? So now this is when we like trade structure and structure, right? So you can see that here, the market created, a minor uptrend, right? But then we would know that this is just a counter trend line. This is what we call counter trend lines. So we can actually then catch the movements to the to the higher low. So this is the only time where you can actually enter the markets and go against the trend. I always say in an uptrend we buy and a downtrend we sell. But then now you can see here our like our trading rules is um we have two trading rules, right? So Trading two trading rules for entries. Third touch, we only enter on the we only enter on the third touch and thereafter. And then uh nope, no retest, no entry. So you can see, yeah, we got a breakout, but then now we literally just got our retest. So we have to wait for the retest before we enter the markets. So that's why I actually have this signal drawn up here. I'm just waiting for it to be valid. I'm just waiting for the market to actually close below um the trend line, right? So you can see that on the one hour time frame, the market closed below. I just want to show you on H4. It's just network, guys. There we go. You can just see that on the H4. You can see that on the H4, we want a, uh, a nice bearish candlestick that close below. But then now we need to wait for a retest. So right now is actually a valid entry point. I'm feeling like this is just a wick, right? Because you can see the previous um, H4 candlestick actually closed below, guys. Entry points are all about, uh, all about, uh, all about timing, guys. You can see here, yeah, we've got a breakout. Yes, the retest. The retest confirms what the change in direction. So we can go ahead and enter right. And it's valid because it goes ahead, like it plays, it goes hand in hand with our market structure. So you can see that overall we're in an uptrend, but then we're just waiting for retracement back to um the upward trend line to create a higher low to push up to the upside, right? Only if the market actually respects over here. So this is all about the market respects in the trend line, guys. How the market respects is how we go. Now the market closes and reacts. So we go. So that's my analysis on US 30 guys. It also confirms with what we saw on NASDAQ, right? So indices are looking bearish this week. So yeah. Let me know what you guys think of that. And then yeah, we'll move on to the next. Yes.
let's keep going shout out standard procedure nice you know you know the vibes guys it's just all about the simple setups you know you have to trade what you see you know and you're only going to see the right information if you actually go to the zoom sessions and actually practice the skill over and over right so now we're going to go into gold right Okay, so now, now we want gold. Let me just look. Okay, are we? Yeah, now now we want gold, guys. So, same thing, guys, as, as you all know, we already start our analysis on the daily time frame. So, you can see that gold, same thing, we got a breakout in the uh, bearish structure, as you can see that we got a change. We got a breakout over here of our bearish structure, right? So breakout indicates a change in direction. After a breakout, you simply wait for retest. Here's our retest. So you can pretty much see after the retest, the market shot up, right? So now it's all about finding entry points to capitalize off the bullish push, right? So that's how, that's when we then actually form an uptrend, right? So we get an uptrend. One of the first signs of the market creating an uptrend is the breakouts and retest, you know? So you can see that ever, ever since the breakouts and retest, the market has been pushing to the upside. And this is when we take our trend line and then we draw it on the higher lows on, on, on our highest on the lowest um points right but then now these low points keep getting higher and higher and that's why we call them higher lows because you can see that this is this is a higher low uh sorry this is a higher low and this is a higher low right this is a low point this is a low point so this is a valid higher low because it's higher than the previous low point you know and that's because the market is creating the structure over and over you can see that well you can see it properly over here higher low broke above to the higher high so this is when the market will close above the trend line and then we enter on the open of the new candlestick right so we found the lows exit on the highs but then now you can see that we got a change in direction so now gold does seem to be um giving us a minor drop, right? But then we know that the overall structure is that a whole bullish move, right? But then looking at H4 and H1, you can see that gold right now is um extremely, let me just remove that crayon, is extremely bearish, right? So now, according to trends and market structure, you can see that we actually have, okay, I'm just going to delete uh, the, the red. Let me just draw this so you can see the breakout here. Let me draw it correctly before I get roasted, guys. Give me a second from the lowest point. Can we go to H4 quickly, guys? I just wanted to get rid of the, of the red. It's extremely important, guys, to make sure that your chart is always clean, guys. Always. That way, it's, um, it's a lot easier and better for you to understand your analysis. You know, so you can pretty much see as our breakout retest. So now you can see that the market is actually creating what our oh, down down the structure. You can see that we have lower highs and lower lows. So let me just remember, you remember guys, when you draw your train line, your train line, your first point can't actually cut through the wick. Your first point has to be precisely on the wick, right? So you can see that here. Yeah, gold is actually selling, right? So you can see that the market just the market just gave us a lower high. This is our previous lower high, so we're expecting the market to break, right? To break um to break this previous lower low to, to break the previous lower low to create another lower low. Yeah, right. But then now what I wanted to say is that remember, guys, we know the overall structure. So now if it just so happens, so now this is when because I'm sure a lot of people get confused. They can see the overall structure and everything, but then it just so happens that on the smaller time frames, the, the structure seems to go against the bigger time frame, you know? Because remember, guys, bigger time frame, we saw buy, right? But then now on the H1, H1, we're seeing a lot of sales, right? But then remember, that's just a retracement for the daily. So now this is when you can actually get a first sign of whether the market is on a respect or not, right? And it's just a simple trading rules right so it's a simple thing of waiting for a breakout and retest on the previous high 
right? So setups like those, I'm sure it's happened where you guys have been in setups like these, right? You go, you get a breakout, you get a breakout, change in direction, and then from here you're expecting to be on a downtrend, but then on your third touch, the market closes above. That's because you're not looking at the overall structure. We can pretty much now look here and look, literally basically read market structure. We can see that this H1 candlestick closed above the previous low. The next candlestick also closed above the previous low. That's our first sign that, okay, the market is most likely to respect this previous low. And we know that the structure, we know that the, the, the structure for downtrend is lower high, lower low. So you can see that over here, we have a lower high and a lower low. First sign that, con that confirms that the market is, you know, confirms that gives us that gives us a sign that the market is most likely to change um, direction as if the market actually breaks the break. Yeah, no, no, sorry, if the market doesn't break the previous low. So if the market doesn't break the previous low, then that's the first sign that the market is changing direction. But then now if the market does what we see here, breaking below, that's a sign that, okay, you know, we're continuing with the structure of the market, you know, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. So then again, lower high, then again, you wait and see, okay. So this is how you can actually catch uh, breakouts and retests in early, guys. Like, But we remember we're trading structure, you know. So now lower low, okay, now the market, if the market closes above, this is not a lower low. Then already we just basically have to wait and see how the market reacts to the high. Once this high is also gone, and that's confirmation that, hey, the market is creating an uptrend, right? So then now, right now, what I'm basically expecting, if the market keeps on respecting this low in entry points, would be right over here. Right, early entry points, and that would go, and then end with the overall structure that we see. Right, you can see that the market broke out. But, uh, our daily our daily down and trend line. So now you guys know the Falcon Falcon 90% rule from the previous low point to the previous high point, vice versa also from the previous high point to the previous low point, from the previous low point to the previous high point. So that's my analysis on code, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Also the tips. Hey, today I gave out a too many-ish. Now I've run out for my next few Zoom sessions. Ah, but I'm joking. Nah, there's, there's always information, guys, you know. Things like these just require, things like these just require, like, a lot of time, you know, like, talking about the market. Like, we talk about the market, but then to break it down, you know, because the only way um, you actually understand the market is when someone breaks it down to you you know so it's either they break it down to you in person or they just break it down to you like once and then you just keep on watching that over and over but then now that's why i provide like weekly that's why we like go on zoom weekly guys you know so that you can see the same thing over and over because in all honesty guys the skill is simple you know the skill is simple you just have to keep on going over and over and over the skill you know it's all about practice you know practice makes perfect you know but practice goes hand in hand um with consistency you know you have to practice you have to practice consistently you know you can't practice once a week you know and then expect to be the best trader and i have to practice like once every day you know so yeah next up we have euro usd you know let me know what you guys are thinking of this session guys in the chat box uh also on uh whatsapp right so you can see now here guys we have AD USD, I mean Euro USD, right? We have Euro USD. Wait a second, guys. So let's take a young video before the load chain actually kicks in. Shut up. Let's go. How do you balance school and forex? Ah, just finish school first, ish, because school is just 12 years of your life, you know. 
trading and financial freedom could be lifetime. So basically, as before Zoom ends our meeting, just going to give an overall view of the next following pairs, you know. So today, I just genuinely wanted to touch up a little bit on the skill, you know, because people are genuinely lazy, guys, to go to the first Zoom session. Trust me, once you go to the first Zoom session, that one's an hour. And then the first seven, once you, you'll see that, just keep on repeating the same thing over and over, right? Today's Zoom session, I just genuinely wanted to touch up on the skill, right? Like breaking down and getting more practical than um getting more practical and also giving the overall direction of the market so you can see euro usd again market structure now this i actually missed because of load shooting and i was going to give it out you can see that breakouts and uh breakout from a downtrend to an uptrend and again over here we want to break out so the market looks to be dropping right but we do know that the overall movement guys is based off the lowest points so you know this is our first second third so every so, so like people who are selling aren't wrong, right? You you have if you are right to sell because if you understand market structure, then you know why you're selling. You're selling basically to the up to the upward trend line because of what? Because you're looking at market structure from downtrend, right? The market closing above this high, that's a sign that okay, uptrend. Literally, guys, just keep on um going over that, right? So you can see. That then what we do is we just throw a train out on a higher lows, higher lows, next higher low. Right? Then that's when we enter. Candlestick must close above, exit on the high, you know. So then now you can see that market, the market is actually following and respecting structure, right? Yes, it's breaking, but then we know that it's respecting the overall structure. You can see that here, see that here we got a breakout. So pretty much you can see that the market is still dropping, right? So now we can still we can still enter um these lows, right? We can still enter the buys. I'm mean, sorry, not the buys, the sells, right? But now the problem is now if you don't understand market structure, you get caught on you go, you'll get caught on the wrong side of the market. Like, yeah, you'd want to buy. If you're just looking at highs and lows, you okay, you'll see a high market breaks, retest, you buy. Then you see again, yeah, then here you'd expect a double bottom. But then we really know that we're a bit in favor of the market actually closing above, right? Reason I'm closing below, sorry, and not closing above. Reason being is because we know that the overall direction and structure is to the downside. So yeah, entry next entry points will be on the breakout and retest, guys. So yeah, that's Euro USD. Next up, I have GP USD. Guys, all these current these currency pairs, currency pay structure is insane this week, guys. We just literally have to wait. For oh, uh, retracements, guys, we have to wait for retracements. So yeah, and then we're gonna hold, guys. So the next, so this is my analysis on GPUSD. You can see that the market simply just from daily broke out, a bullish structure from bearish to bullish, then broke out of the bullish structure again to bearish. Right. So now, we know the market is just simply forming downtrend. So now we can enter either. On the third, here we go. So yeah, so this is the actual entry point that I was waiting for. First, second, third touch. I was waiting for the touch of the trend line. So currently, the market to me, because I like looking at it from market structure. Currently, the market. Let me just break it down. Currently, the market to me is ish these efforts, guys. Currently, the market to me right now is actually looking very, looking very bearish. Let me just open the gate. Market is looking very bearish, right? Because you can see that the market created lower high, lower, lower low, lower high. You can see here yeah, this was lower low, but it was broken, right? So then here yeah, you basically expecting a lower high. Then now we're basically waiting for a lower low. Now the market is actually sitting at a lower low. 